Well, good morning and welcome to our THQ Chapel. And uh, today I've been asked to share a focus about call and commitment. So I'm glad that you've tuned in and looking forward to spending this time together. Uh, February is our focus for call and commitment. And uh, this year we're thinking about kingdom impact ready for mission. And it's in the context of the great commission that we'll be thinking about. And so I thought it would be helpful for us to look at those verses this morning. And so I'd like to read from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Would you join me in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this unique opportunity that we have to share together in worship today. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness to us through the years, but especially in this season. And uh, we just pray today that as we focus our thoughts on the Great Commission, that you would speak to our hearts, that you would remind us of the power of the gospel and our role in proclaiming it. And I just pray that even if there is someone listening who has not yet responded to the message of the gospel in their own life, that you, by the power of your spirit, would prompt them to respond today. And we will be careful to give you a praise and glory for how you are at work in our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, please join me in uh, singing. Uh, led by a Salvation Army group called Transmission. Uh, I'll be singing along and uh, I hope you will too. It's a song from our song book with a new melody, so please uh, join in singing there in your own home.
Well, we're privileged today to be able to have a special guest with us, and uh, I've invited Cadet Zachary Marshall to share a brief word of testimony with us today. Uh, Zachary is a first-year cadet in the Messengers of Reconciliation session. He's originally from Newfoundland, but spent several years at Booth University College in Winnipeg and went to training college from the Heritage Park Temple Corps. I hope you'll enjoy listening to Zachary's testimony. When I studied business administration in my undergrad degree, a large component of this was to take statistics classes. Uh, a memorable teaching for me was that of a conditional statement, an if-then statement. If X is true, then this occurs. These statements work by declaring what will happen if the first part is true or correct. And this is how I've come to understand the words of Jesus in pronouncing the Great Commission. In response to some people who had doubted him, he says in Matthew 28, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. When I was considering the calling that God had placed on my life, in the midst of taking those statistics classes, God showed me that this phrase by Jesus is one of these conditional statements. The first statement Jesus makes is that all authority in heaven and earth had been given to him. Some people have trouble accepting that Jesus Christ is Lord over all. He is supreme over all creation, and he is an active agent in the creation and recreation of this world. Just as he did 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ is calling men and women like you and me to come to his side and to acknowledge that he is Lord. For me, this was ultimately the most difficult part of my calling. I struggled with accepting the Lordship of Jesus Christ. But don't get me wrong here. I was a Christian. I was a Salvation Army soldier. But there were areas of my life where I was not willing to let Jesus come in and Lord over. It came to the point where I came to a crossroads in my faith where I had to kneel and say, All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. And in acknowledging that Jesus had full authority over my life, the rest became clear because the Great Commission is a conditional statement. If Jesus had authority in heaven and earth, then I was to go and make disciples of all nations. In accepting and acknowledging the Lordship of Jesus Christ, I also accepted and acknowledged my calling to make disciples, to bring men and women into a deeper relationship with the risen Christ. After much discernment, I realized that God had been inviting me to do this through full-time, covenanted, sacrificial service as an officer in the Salvation Army. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that everyone must serve in a full-time vocational capacity, but we must also recognize that there are people who God calls to be officers in the Salvation Army and ministers and pastors. My experience at the College for Officer Training has only deepened this sense of mission from Jesus. How can I fulfill the Great Commission to go and make disciples of all nations? Well, I quickly learned that it has nothing to do with me, but what Christ is doing in me and through me. I am just a vessel, the hands and feet of Jesus here on earth. My biggest role in this whole matter has been surrender and obedience. God is filling in the rest. Commissioner Tracy Titus put it this way, serving God is taking it one yes at a time, one step of faith at a time. The song we sang just moments ago says, The world for God, the world for God, I give my heart, I'll do my part. This shows us how we ought to respond to the Great Commission. If Jesus has all authority in heaven and earth, how should we respond? 
by giving our hearts? How can we make sure that we are making disciples out of all nations by doing our part? And today I want you to consider what is your part? Perhaps uh, you're wondering how you can serve God and perhaps there are soldiers who are listening who are wondering, how can I serve God better? What is he leading me towards? Might I encourage you to consider what God has in store for you. Perhaps it is a continued obedience to him wherever you are now serving in this current context. Or perhaps it is a new obedience in exploring the possibility that God is calling you to Salvation Army officership, full-time ministry. But whatever it is, whatever you discern for God, if Jesus has all authority in heaven and earth, let us then go and make disciples out of all nations. Well, as I said earlier, our focus this year for our call and commitment is uh, found in gospel, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, the Great Commission. And so I've been thinking a lot about the Great Commission uh, over these past several weeks in preparation. And we're going to be looking at the Great Commission in more detail uh, during our online call and commitment service coming up on February 7th. And the invitation to you is to join in and be part of that service online. Uh, but I thought it would be helpful and appropriate for me today to help center our thoughts around the Great Commission uh, today as well. Uh, there's several people that come to mind when I think about people who have lived out the Great Commission in their life. And, and first of all, I think of William Booth, our beloved founder uh, of the Salvation Army, who at the age of 15 years old had a salvation experience, a conversion experience, and, and in that moment said, God shall have all there is of William Booth. And from that a moment of obedience to Christ, the Salvation Army is, is at work today in over 130 countries around the world bringing the message of the gospel. And Booth says uh, of his conversion moment that in that moment it made him a preacher of the gospel. He says, the idea never dawned on me that any line was to be drawn between one who had nothing else to do but preach and a saved apprentice lad who only wanted to spread through all the earth abroad the fame of our Savior. Booth is an example of someone who was obedient to God's call to live out the Great Commission. Well, I also think of Bill Bright. Maybe you've heard of him. Uh, Bill Bright reports that in 1951, he was inspired to leave his growing business to pursue the spiritual command to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. And so Bill and his wife pursued their passion for the gospel and began Campus Crusade for Christ, a ministry to college students that has since expanded around the world, uh, reaching students and inner cities, uh, military personnel, athletes, political and business leaders, uh, entertainment industries, and families. Bright is also the author of, of a short booklet called The Four Spiritual Laws that outlines how to have a relationship with Christ. And that booklet has been translated in over 200 languages and more than 2.5 billion people have received a copy of that little booklet. And then in 1979, uh, Bright, in partnership with Campus Crusade, introduced the world to the Jesus film. And this film has been seen by more than 5.1 billion people in over 200 countries. Bright has since gone to be with the Lord, but he gave four excellent reasons on why you and I should help fill the Great Commission. And I just want to briefly share those four reasons with you this morning. He says, we should help fulfill the Great Commission, first of all, because Christ commanded us to do so. And if you take a close look at the text, you'll see that Jesus didn't use optional language. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples. The, the command is clear and plain, isn't it? It's not a casual suggestion. 
The Great Commission is a firm command to all believers, and, and Jesus left no room for negotiation. In other words, if you are a follower of Jesus, you must take seriously the Great Commission and dedicate yourself fully to seeing its fulfillment, not out of duty, but as a response to God's generous mercy in our own lives. I wonder what would happen if every follower of Jesus took seriously the command of the Great Commission. What if every day we wake up and get to work and it's a great commission that inspires us and motivates? Uh, I wonder if there are days perhaps when, when you and I need to recapture our passion for the gospel and for lost people. And that might be a helpful exercise to just take some time today to pause and reflect on, on some of those questions and ask the Lord to speak to your own heart and listen for what he might be prompting you. Uh, number two, we should help fill the Great Commission because all people are lost without Christ. And I want to remind you today that that's still the truth of the gospel. And I want to ask you, do you still believe it? Have you considered lately that there are people in your family and mine and in our neighbors, our co-workers that are spiritually lost because they don't know Christ personally? The Bible is clear that Salvation is found in no one else, and there's no other name uh, in heaven or under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. And that alone should compel us to actively participate in the fulfillment of the Great Commission. Add to that the some 3.6 billion people in the world who are still unreached. They're, they haven't had the opportunity to even hear the gospel and respond, and we realize that there's still much work for us to do. I am so encouraged when I hear stories of transformation. And I was so glad to hear in our territorial leaders New Year address of the many commitments to Christ that were made in our territory last year. May God help us and inspire us to lead even more people to Christ this year as we partner together for the sake of the gospel. The thirdly, Bright says we should help fulfill the Great Commission because people everywhere are hungry for God. And that was certainly true in the pages of the Bible as you read through the Gospels and see how people just wanted to gather and be in the presence of Jesus. And it's true of our world today. People are still searching for something to satisfy them. In your neighborhood and mine, people are looking for something and most don't even know what they're looking for. I'm often reminded of the lyrics from U2, and they speak of climbing mountains and, and running through fields and scaling walls, all kinds of experiences, and then the powerful line, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. All over the world, people are hungry for the message of the gospel. And finally, we should help fulfill the Great Commission because there is urgency in our message. The Bible is clear. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 that as God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is a time of God's favor. Now is a day of salvation. And certainly it's true today. And and I think that if there was ever a time when people needed to hear the gospel message, it's today. And, and maybe uh, all generations think that way, but I believe, especially in this season, people need to hear the hope of the gospel. Well, back to Booth. Let, let's finish up. Booth understood the urgency of the Great Commission. He described himself as red hot, and he wanted to reproduce red hot evangelists, preaching the gospel and winning thousands to Christ. And it was this passion for evangelism that sustained his mission to serve the poor effectively. A close family friend of his said he was the most earnest and enthusiastic man that she ever knew. He was really burning, really on fire to save souls. He used to say that we were saved to save. He could not stand people who said their souls were saved and did nothing to save other people. And that's a challenge for me today. It may be a challenge to all of us as we consider our efforts to reach people with the gospel. Our methods may change, but our message is still the same. And there may be some of you watching today who have never responded to the invitation to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. 
And today you want to acknowledge that you have sinned against God and you want to repent and invite Jesus to be Lord of your life. We'll celebrate that decision with you. And there may be others watching today and the Holy Spirit is prompting you in some way. And we'd love to hear about that. Perhaps some of you may even be pondering what it would mean for you to offer your life for service as a Salvation Army officer. And there are those of us across this territory who are wanting to take that journey with you. However the Lord is prompting you to respond today, may we all be found faithful and obedient to the proclamation of the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, we're going to spend another moment and sing together, and then I'll be back to have a concluding prayer. God bless you. Yeah. 
Well, I hope you've enjoyed spending uh, this time together this morning. I hope the Lord has ministered to you in a special way. And I'd just like to pray a prayer of blessing uh, to conclude our time together. And so our Heavenly Father, we commit this time to you. Thankful for uh, each person that has tuned in and watched together or will watch later. Uh, and we pray, Lord, that you would just continue to inspire and encourage us all to be messengers of the gospel, remind us of the urgency uh, of our message and, and the hope that it has. And uh, we just pray, Lord, that you'll honor our efforts and we ask uh, for uh, a harvest of many, many souls uh, to come to know you as your personal Lord and Savior. I pray for someone who may be watching today and you're prompting them to respond to a call in your life to Salvation Army officership. I pray you'll give them courage to reach out to someone and respond and uh, Lord, we just pray that many, many more people uh, would come and respond and uh, offer their lives for service in the Salvation Army. We believe there's still a great work for us to do. We want to partner with you, Father, uh, in the transformation of our communities. Uh, so we pray for the empowerment and anointing of your Holy Spirit and all that we will do and say today, all for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.